about how this works. I'm not a technologist. Don't ask me those kinds of questions <laughs> about how this works. But I am someone, and I share this with others in my company, that's enthusiastic about our efforts to provide uh, broadband connectivity to low-income households. Um, what Comcast described themselves as as an urban provider, we are not. Um, we're exactly the opposite in Minnesota. I handed out um, a, a sheet that describes our, our network. We primarily operate in Minnesota, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Um, when I started with uh, Midco almost 10 years ago, like next week, we served 12 communities in Minnesota. So through acquisitions and uh, expansions, uh, we serve now over 100. There's a lot of communities that we serve in Minnesota that aren't on the map that you're seeing because they're not on our network. They're old horse and buggy technology uh, that we are seeking to uh, upgrade in many cases. But um, what you would see on the map represented uh, for Minnesota today are those communities where uh, a broadband lifeline would be a reality because it's it's uh, communities that we serve with data. We do have some cable only uh, communities. Um, again, and those are they're becoming antiques um, and very rapidly. We serve across the three states uh, uh, 1,500 um, communities, or excuse me, households all together, and you can see the, the progression that that's been increasing. <clears throat> One of our challenges is, is what we've had the discussions today, how to get the word out, and, uh, and what's the best methodology. Uh, for myself, I, 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 I kind of inelegantly say it, we're reluctant to market a low-income program. We, I've always tried to use the philosophy that we're trying to get the information out. Um, because marketing and, and low income doesn't seem to me to go together. I know a pure marketer would say getting the word out is marketing, you know, get over it uh, type of thing. But uh, we've done things like partner with uh, community groups, school systems. Uh, in Minnesota, we sent a letter out with an example of our literature uh, to uh, all the, the county service offices in the counties that we have service. Um, it wasn't a great response. We've also run uh, on our cable systems tens of thousands of public information ads like we saw the one uh, Comcast put up. So that's, uh, uh, but now if you pick up the green form, here's the barrier. Our program, we don't have an auto enroll based on school uh, uh, lunch eligibility because we'll accept if you're uh, TANF, if you're SSI in a senior population, um, WIC, uh, any of the uh, assistance programs, if you're eligible for those, well, because this is not a government-sponsored program, it's a MIDCO program, uh, we're essentially uh, trying to get you to sign up for a technology service from us where you have to file a paper form with copies of relevant documents attached. I mean, we understand that about what we're trying to do, but we don't have a government agency to interface with um, about eligibility. And, uh, and actually that would go two ways, something for this group to consider. The government shouldn't be really uh, overly free with sharing who's on assistance and who's not. Um, but remember, we as uh, uh, the companies that we are, are also required by federal law not to be sharing with people who our customers are. So it's, uh, that's a barrier uh, that has to be uh, overcome uh, for us to be more effective in reaching uh, low-income households. But uh, we have had some success. Uh, again, the word is getting out. Um, let's see here. Um, our customers for this program uh, as you see, single-family housing units, um, it should say house slash manufactured housing. I apologize for the uh, old terminology of uh, trailer house. Um, and then uh, you see apartment and dwellers. Um, here's um, something interesting for this group with your emphasis on, um, on Minnesota, is that uh, our greatest number of households participating are in Sioux Falls, um, 
you do see uh, Moorhead, Minnesota, and Forest Lake. We just, uh, Moorhead, probably the largest community that we serve in Minnesota, uh, as a kind of a see the pants judgment. So we don't have a lot of the, uh, the urban centers. But as food for thought for this group and, and the whole process, um, once we get past um, the federal uh, remake of these kinds of efforts uh, toward the first of the year, we're interested in hearing <clears throat> at Midco how we can be more effective in getting the word out. I mean, we, we, we got into this program before the government did, um, and we intend to stay in it um, despite or whatever changes might be uh, brought forward uh, by the FCC in their program. So we want to stay in it for the long haul. Um, and and uh, here's a demonstration of that. Um, we will downgrade an existing customer if they call us and uh, ask to be included in this program and have the eligibility. Uh, no waiting periods. We do, we do want to uh, uh, clean up old debt. That has been a barrier um, with some customers, but a little uh, uh, patting my company on the back. Um, you would think the financial types in my uh, organization, when they see this, they were taking people that are committed enough to having the service to pay full price for it and downgrading them because they reached out to us. Um, our financial folks have not wavered one bit when faced with this reality that we're actually taking existing paying customers and giving them a huge discount uh, because they reached out to us. And I'm quite proud of our, our company uh, for that fact. And then uh, here is uh, our number of units per state. Again, our we have the largest number of employees and uh, facilities in South Dakota. Uh, so you can see some of that. And we have larger uh, population centers, uh, Sioux Falls or Rapid City, that we serve than any place we serve in, in Minnesota. But um, we are increasing you know, across all of them and would uh, like to, uh, again, be more effective at getting the word out and getting people signed up. Uh, also, thank you uh, for the subject matter today because um, we are really at Midco um, in, uh, I was trying to come up with the right analogy about, you know, perhaps we've, uh, we've, we've hit a pretty solid uh, uh, baseball into the outfield, and, um, but we're pausing, and we hit a solid double, and we're, and we're pausing as we're rounding second. Uh, we're, we're, we're reluctant to take third because we don't want to know um, what, uh, the feds are finally going to do with the way the broadband lifeline uh, goes forward. Um, my only problem with that is, is that with the twins, who knows anything about round and second? I mean, I mean, I mean, I'm, facing, I'm, a, I'm a fan, but I'm suffering. I'm suffering. So anyway, uh, we are in a little bit of a of a, a holding pattern. We, our commitment remains to this program, but just how we're going to operate it. Brent, we have 380 telephone lifeline uh, participants in Minnesota, which is already below the number of uh, broadband lifeline participants we have. But again, everything we've heard so far, you know, cues off the telephone lifeline and then on to the broadband, and where our existing program doesn't do that at all. And then just uh, just to show you how sometimes the smallest details um, can get in the way. Uh, preliminarily, we've heard the Fed indicate that they want the reimbursement for that to be 925. We, like Comcast, uh, have ours at 995. Um, we don't know how all that is going to work out, but I did get commitments from our executives at the company that we're not going to bill anyone for 70 cents. Uh, you know, how, however that shaped out in the end. So I'll just stop there and wait for us to get around to the